All right. Well, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, this is uh, the sort of new format for Crypto Mastery and uh, the training we're going to go through. We'll look at some charts, uh, some beginner level charts and cover some TA and uh, look at some news. And uh, I want to dive into some news. The big news for today is uh, Coinbase is cutting its staff by 20%. So this contagion seems to be spreading here. Maybe I will put the camera on back for just for the news side of things. And so before we dive into any, everything, on a greater note, uh, the uh, we are pushing a bit higher. Bitcoin's up above the 17,100 level that we had posted in the Active Trader Signal Group as a, a key line in the sand. I want to see if it closes above that. And uh, we've also got USDT up a little bit. Uh, well, that's the stable coin, so that's not really relevant. We'll take a look at that here in a bit turn off some of these ads. So um, let me come back to that. But I want to talk about the other shoe that may be that may be in the wings to drop. I am seeing signs of an incoming altcoin and in, in crypto rally. What could stop it in its tracks? We've got uh, Powell speaking this week. And uh, we also have the uh, some other economic news, which I posted in the Signal Group. So uh, that's what we're waiting for. Now, back to the key point, though. What's happening with Coinbase may be related to the digital currency group and the problems there. They're essentially insolvent. Barry Silbert is bankrupt, allegedly. And the problems with uh, Gemini are hanging out there, too. So just to circle around on that. Digital Currency Group had ownership in Coinbase and also Grayscale Bitcoin Trust and Genesis. Genesis was a crypto lending arm that um, imploded and essentially uh, is as a billion plus in customer assets that's evaporated. The Winklevoss twins that own Gemini brokerage are exposed about 900 million and they were trying to get that back. They gave a deadline of January 8th which came and went over the weekend the department of justice announced they were investigating the parent company digital currency group so all kinds of contagion and fear right now and there is still risk so we want to be aware of that and that um the uh, that could spread to these other companies that digital currency group was involved with including coinbase so now they were top heavy, and I think that um, you know Coinbase did come out last year and said technically that if they go bankrupt, uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. They're a public company; they're doing the a smart thing by getting lean and uh, riding out the bear market. The bigger fear, however, is if Grayscale Bitcoin Trust gets liquidated of all their Bitcoin to fill in all of the debts of digital currency group. And so we want to look and keep an eye out on that. Uh, and we uh, will look at some uh, basic charts here. I'm not seeing that as being priced in. And I'm a big believer. Show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. And we're not seeing that. Now, Bitcoin's showing down a little bit today. But that's surprising because on the month, well, the monthly chart is bullish. And I just posted in and um here on uh, trading view by the way they have a new feature here called mines so i just posted in here it's like a twitter almost kind of neat so i just posted a picture of this we're all green on the radar all green and the bullish engulfing on the monthly so i'm not seeing a lot of fear on um, by the smart money so we want to be a little careful with this but i think maybe we've put in a bottom and this fear that's happening is a diversionary tactic. Do you remember at the tops, all the news was good news. We're going to 100,000, everything's great. So at these extremes are when you wanna be leery of the uh, consensus and the fear. So I'm not saying go all in, I'm just saying not seeing the signs yet that there's more to come. We'll keep an eye on that and we'll come back to it. But that's the big news for today. Coinbase uh, laying off 20% of its staff. But Joe, did, did you wanna chime in on any thoughts on this week's um, you know, Powell speaking tomorrow, and then there is also something economic news on Thursday. Yeah, I I just like to say in there that uh, right now um, things are progressing lovely, and uh, the only thing that could be the you know the factor of changing this direction is th that report and is Powell. So. Um, a couple of things in particular, what I'm doing with my trades is I'm setting alerts and uh, I'm preparing in here that uh, if in the event of uh, the what if 
if these different alerts trigger, um, how I can react accordingly um, to position myself uh, in the event uh, if the market goes down, but um, also what I can do to lock in profits um, if the market starts to uh, head up higher for another leg. Because uh, that's something that you know you want to do is lock in profits as the market is trending higher because there's no telling if, if the price is actually going to stay there. It, we might get a, a, a spike up and then it'll be questionable whether or not it's able to sustain those prices. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, of course, the CPI data is uh, Thursday. So, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see, right? Um, what if they, we could see, and you know, we could extensively see a major rally here if they ease, uh, start easing. Although the reality is even when the Fed pivots, prices, you know, still continue lower in the stock market because, um, you know, the underlying problem is still there and, and history has shown that. So we'll have to see, but I, I am feeling like we're, we're going to see a bit of a rally here. It may not be the bottom or a huge V shaped recovery, um, but this is interesting here. The bullish engulfing candles uh, that have always uh, not always, but invariably um, usually signal further upside. But if we just draw a simple trend line here, you know, we could come up here and uh, maybe up to this 19,500 range and still put in, take some time to put in this bottom. So this is what I was showing you that uh, these bullish engulfing candles in the past have been largely had a lot of follow through. So we are seeing that on this month. We have all green on the radar, the four hour daily, weekly, monthly. And uh, Joe, uh, maybe can you talk about what this means and what are these signals are? Because then when I was, when we first developed this, it wasn't clear which one of the crypto mastery signals that these refer to. And it's actually one they don't have and don't need, uh, they don't need to have on their charts, but um, people might be wondering what this refers to. Well, well, basically the radar is designed in there to monitor multiple time frames um, and be able to show the trend direction with color. So the concept is, is that we're looking for it to be all green or for it to be, uh, like I said, Christmas. Uh, Christmas would be red and green. Um, so when we see it all green like this, basically this is saying that, look, everything is in alignment with all the cycles and time frame under that column, you'll notice it says 240, one day, one week, and one month. So that's a way in there where the user can uh, be able to um, expedite uh, his, his or her technical analysis on which direction the market is going by seeing in there um, how much green do you actually have. Now, in, in this case point, we're seeing everything, uh, I think, kind of a complete a pattern right now that we're seeing across the whole crypto. And uh, it, it could be explosive move to the upside. I mean, right now, all of the uh, cycles are in alignment. Um, the question is, is uh, you know, if we get that follow through from the move, but uh, mathematically, um, everything is uh, conditioned to move. Yeah, <clears throat> and so this is a, a bit more of a beginner class. So we won't go into detail on these, but we are seeing recovery. And this is the MACD on a monthly. So basically, uh, this is when we were over bought up here. This is last November where I was telling people to get into cash. This crossover line here was really saying this is we need to get out of these markets. And so ostensibly, we're, we're going to see another few months before this really kind of comes back in. Most likely these things, you know, take time to turn around. And so if we see some rallies, we'll likely see some pullbacks. But this is very encouraging that monthly uh, Bitcoin uh, on the uh, four uh, time frames, the radar, but that's bullish engulfing. So we've kind of covered that. And so um, let's see, guys, uh, in terms of the rest of the markets, we um, can certainly dive into some of the coins that we normally watch, but this is uh, interactive. And so some of you had questions on technical analysis, et cetera. So this is, this is really designed to be more of an interactive class where you can ask questions and get uh, your questions answered. So are there any questions? Because we can also keep these class shorter if uh, there aren't any. And so in uh, terms of that, I'm just gonna put all this in here so we can hide these and put those back on easier. Okay. 
All right. Well, then why don't we look at the uh, crypto screener and just kind of see what's uh, looking good and we can dive into some charts and uh, go from there. All right. So. Okay, I hear somebody trying to enter, but they're going to have to hold on for a bit. All right. So I'm going to sort these and then, uh, you know, Joe, if you have anything you want me to pull up, we can do that. And no questions. All right. Well, we're going to make it a short class then because um, not a whole lot to cover here. But the more advanced stuff I don't want to overlap with tomorrow. We have the active trader class. But um, so we've got, uh, I don't really follow SHIB, but um, let's see. I want to go back. I want to leave this Bitcoin daily intact and go to a daily chart. Here we can do that. If you guys haven't connected your paper trading, by the way, you should be doing that and at the very least be doing paper trading. So uh, Gala Games had a nice run up here and uh, it's you know, it was uh, on our list here as of recently, but it was up 189% in the last few days. So now this is on uh, Coinbase too. I would say at this point, it's probably a bit uh, overbought and I wouldn't be chasing it. Uh, can you reach out to Rick Myrene? He seems to have trouble getting into the room. He keeps trying to uh, get in. I'm not sure if he's able to join us. All right. <clears throat> and so we had an ERI back here. We had a TSI going green. Let's see. I want to make sure. All right, let's do this. Gala Games. Got it here. And this is the layout. Uh, I encourage you guys to use your templates, by the way. And um, the way to do that is once you set up your charts, it's this box right here. Okay, so save indicator templates. So if you're starting from scratch, I'll just delete all these out. You can come back to your ideal chart patterns and setups and buy and save these. So I'm gonna go up under here and under indicator templates, my usual template is the uh, daily default. So with a click of a button, I can load the ERI, the TSI, and uh, both ERIs. This is the indicator with the arrow. We have the one with the oscillator and then the trend strength indicator down below. And we have the signal line. And of course, the, uh, the trend, this should be the trend indicator. I'm not sure why that's not showing up. Okay, so I'll re-add that. And you, by now you guys should have loaded all of your indicators. And so if you don't have all these, uh, certainly reach out to us and we'll get those added. But uh, I've been, we've been proactive and been talking to Joe. He uh, has the list of everybody and everything you guys should be having. So, all right, that is the wrong one. Yeah, there's a bunch in here, you guys. When you see my screen, you're not gonna have all these. We can't figure out how to like remove them once they're in here. We have a bunch of older ones. So the trend indicator is the one you want with the key next to it. So here's the thing with uh, Gala Games, this is why these indicators are so powerful. And these are the four you wanna be paying attention to. Uh, okay, I see a question here. So I'll get to that, Tori, thanks. Uh, and uh, so basically when you see the arrow here, this is your first signal, the early reversal indicator. And that's this vertical green line also. The confirmation is on the TSI. So going red to green and going up above that 20 line. And then the signal line going red to green also, especially when you see this nice vertical slope like that. And from the negative, negative areas going red to green down below. That really helps. But this is the one you want to be paying attention to. This was a perfect trade, you guys. Pay attention to this because had you been watching Gala Games and had you had your alert set, I did have my alert set and I, I pointed this out the other day, you would have caught this early and could have gotten on at the bell signal. These that all align when you have the green arrow and the green TSI above 20, green signal line, and then you get the key in the bell the way to do this is leg into these trades. So you might allocate some capital on the trade. This is not a recommendation for Gala. This is in general. So you might allocate say 20% here and then another 20% when the signal line goes green, another 20% when you have a TSI breaking above 20 and then maybe all in uh, of the allocated amount for that position on the bell. The bell is the buy signal. 
and especially when it turns from red to green here. That's a caveat also. But uh, in terms of these, and this is the genius of this indicator, Joe, is you know, this is a clear signal to buy. You have an early warning on the key. The key says, hey, there may be an uptrend changing or changing of a trend. And then here is the buy. And then usually you'll see if it completes the cycle, one, two, three, four, and then five is a partial take profit. Always recommend taking profits. And then six, and then the bag of money would have been a good selling indicator today, which normally will, uh, it does, normally we'll see a pullback on these. And then you wanna wait for another key and another bell. And the bell would be to buy back in. And very often this, you'll, we can nail it right at the top or the high of the week, whatever that is, and then wait for a pullback. And then the next bell usually is lower and then we see the cycle repeat. Uh, Joe, is there anything you want to add to that? I know we do have new members here, so uh, it's good to kind of refresh everyone's memory and uh, just go over this. So feel free to chime in on any of these. Uh, no, uh, as the market progresses, um, when you see those higher highs take place, you'll notice that the numeric value uh, goes up. And as that's going up, that's confirming that uh, the trend is going in your favor. Now, in order for us to, uh, the way this is designed, you know, there's a, a science behind those numbers. It just so happens the way technology is that there's different ways for us to show the condition. And, uh, you know, we show the condition, you know, as being green, meaning is that it's okay uh, to buy because the condition is bullish. And we also can, com can combine multiple different equations and that's how we created the numbers so the numbers working behind the scene even though we're only seeing it as a value there is actually a uh, uh, code behind that where it's looking at a combination of multiple conditions to be able to uh, generate that number so uh, each bar that you're seeing from that one to two uh, the program itself is uh, doing the calculations in the background, you know, all the dirty work. And then it's being able to show you, hey, is this thing trending? And that's when you see the color green and the higher value. Or um, when the market is not trending, when you see no color at all. So if there's no color, that means no trend. And then when you do see the color, that means that um, things are now starting to progress and uh, the market should head higher. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's why, you know, there are more indicators. Uh, these are the four staples that we recommend you use. And uh, as in, I do cover this in, in a lot of detail in the uh, new training. So please do watch that and you can watch it at higher speeds to get through it faster. But um, at any rate, this was a, an ideal scenario here where these all lined up and certainly 189 percent guys there's opportunities pay you want to be paying attention right now uh and not chasing these but um 185 percent in a week and look at that the eri if you were watching it nailed it right as it started to go that would have been your first signal and then second one is the tsi going green here and you can set your alerts on these so uh, what here's here's what i want to point out is that while things are quiet, be setting alerts on as many of the coins you want to see within reason. I mean, when things do get crazy, as we saw in 2021, all of a sudden everything's erupting and it can cause analysis paralysis and you wind up making bad trades. So uh, question, how do you set alerts? All right, so sure, let me show you that. So basically on this chart of the TSI and clicking on the indicator itself, uh, you can also do it. It's a little tricky. See this drop down menu. If this is exposed, then you can usually hit the settings on it as, as well on these little gear icons. But when you have a lot on the chart, it uh, you can't see all of them below. So you see this plus five down below. Those are the sort of hidden ones. So the way I usually do it is I'll open up the actual indicator here and click on it once. So the little dots show up and then right click on that under settings. And again, I cover this in the uh, TA training that I just uploaded last night. It came out really well. It's about just about 90 minutes. So um, I'm sorry, to set alerts is what you had asked. So on this right click also and go to the add alert on the TSI entry. 
So, and this would be a good clarification. So there's two ways to do this. And the way I usually used to do it, now Joe has added some new ways. I'll let him explain that. But I'll usually do crossing up the 20 line. And so in this case, it would alert right here, which is that confirmation. So as it breaks through that 20 line is the confirmation. Now, this is significant also, the enlarged TSI symbol. Uh, I use this, it looks like a Chevron. I, the default might be circles. I just find these easier to use. I'll show you how to change those. It's also one of the great things about the indicators. It's easy to edit those and modify them. But on the alert side, now you can do this only once or once per bar close, and that means it'll happen every time. So if, if we want to watch out for the next time Gala comes down and up, I might change it to this. And you can also modify all these things so that uh, this is not really useful information. Just delete that out. TSI entry, crossing up 20 on Gala. You don't really need the USTT. Oops. So you can edit these messages. This is what pops up when the alert signs uh, signals. So I'll hit create. So there we go. Had we had that alert set, it would have alerted us right here on Monday. And that would have been Monday a week ago. So was that a good place to get in? I mean, guys, I, I don't know if you realize what you have in your hands here. It, it really is that powerful. And we've been waiting months for these signals to align and get in front of these. And we may see more explosive moves like this. If you want to pay for your, your annual subscription, uh, these opportunities are percolating. Uh, I don't want you to go in over your head, but when you do see these line up, so again, early reversal indicator, green, green here. Now the signal line sometimes goes green after the TSI. In fact, often it does. But in this case, signal line went green the same day as the ERI. So that's actually bullish. So we have that here. You can set alerts on this also. And uh, actually, I forgot to let Joe chime in on the other way to set a TSI alert. So we'll come back to that. On the signal line, yeah, so this, uh, and Joe, I want to make sure I'm saying this right. It, this would set the alert when it turns green at this little circle if we leave it as the uh, puzzle piece. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, I normally don't set alerts on this one because generally for me, I've seen it as a somewhat lagging. And so there's that. Now we'll set alerts the next time it goes red to green here. And uh, back to the TSI, though, there was two things I forgot to show you. One was under settings. Okay. If, you're, if you have circles when you download yours, you can certainly keep those. I like using this uh, label up and um, <clears throat> it just shows up better, a little arrow. And there's three of each. I don't really know why, I'm sure only Jones knows why there's three of each of these, but just change those. And you can turn them into whatever you want. You can make a circle, cross, diamond flag. So whatever that's good for you. Uh, on the alert though, uh, so Joe, on the alert side, if what, explain please the oversold, overbought alerts and when, when in the trajectory those would, would fire. Sure. Well, when you use this oscillator, right, you'll notice in there, um, down in, in the uh, blue shaded area, right, and you'll notice there's a green shaded area. And basically, the way this oscillator works is that it's showing in there the market strength uh, direction. And when the market uh, strength is at its um, lowest, which is considered oversold, that's when it's down there in the blue area. So traders, they like to position themselves at oversold conditions, anticipating the oscillator to move up into the green area, which is considered overbought conditions. So it's kind of like a, a frequency, you know, like a wave. And right. um, this alert here can be set by the usual, utilizing the green dot, and then that's showing the exact precise time of when the positions turn up. And you can also use that um, along with crossing the 20. So it's, it's optional to the user which one to use. 
and to, and to clarify, so uh, when if we set it to oversold, is that because I, I do it the way I showed you, and this is somewhat new, uh, is oversold when it breaks down below the 20 here, or is it when it turns uh, green for the first time down here? When does this trigger? It, it's, it triggers as you see it on the screen. When you see that green dot, if you want that alert, okay, that's what you set it for. So if you want that green dot right there that triggered, that would be your uh, mark of when that mathematically changed. Got it. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. So I just want to clarify that and make sure. So um, that's important, guys. I would recommend for safety reasons, until you're more advanced, I would set it as coming up above the 20. That just confirms that uh, it's more likely to continue the oscillation here. Sometimes this line here, this is, would be the alert for showing this uh, uh, mark. So uh, the default is usually a circle, as, I, as he said. But um, sometimes that leads it. So right down in here, this would have been a good early warning. And if it coincides with the early reversal indicator, you know, this can be a good time to get in a bit early. However, it can also uh, fake out. Like So here, if we go back this far, it sort of languishes a bit. But in the end, it's still oversold, and it's still good to know this as a in, in buy opportunity zone. And then that confirmation, even these can fail at times. I mean, this was rare, but yeah, you know, once they do break the twenty line, generally they go and follow through, and there's profit opportunities here. Okay, so you see that, and so basically uh, that's what we want to be paying attention for. So that's the two ways to do the alerts for this one. So that way we have. Just to be perfectly clear, we've got the first signal, ERI, got the ERI, check. And then we have the TSI going green and above the 20 line, check. Okay, this is like launching a rocket here. All systems go. And then number three, we've got the signal line going green, check, right? And then we have the bell signal. Now, once we have those, you're good for alert, clear for launch. Okay. You know, always use your stop losses, but it's a greatly risk reduced trade when these are all in alignment. Okay. And then plan to take some profits on these areas here uh, when the bags of money. If you do this repeatedly, then this is how you can compound your investments. And certainly, as we are extremely oversold, this is an ideal place to be looking for these opportunities. Now, a word of caution though. Um, keep in mind that the newer projects that don't yet have monetization models, aka a way to make money, uh, are going to be very volatile, very speculative. And so Gala Games, you know, do your own research on these things and kind of get a feel for that. That's something we talk about in Active Trader is, you know, are they well-funded? Do they have investments and, and institutional investors? Do they have ways to make money? And uh, or, or, or are they so early that it's just speculation? Gala Games, very early, very, very early. Uh, they don't have a working model yet. They're not making money yet. Uh, however, uh, from a speculative basis, if we're putting in a market bottom, you know, this could be a good time to be getting in onto these. And so question is, are we? I don't recommend necessarily holding all the way up. But if it does go back to the old time highs, it's 4,000, 4,200% return or 42X. So here's a safety measure that I would like to show you guys. And uh, let me, um, <clears throat> this is where you'll combine the uh, ERI and also other indicators that uh, you might use. So basically I wanna grab this. I was trying to turn the ERI off there, but my uh, thing went away, my menu. So this is, you know, some of these symbols are and signals are, the easiest are the best. See this long-term trend line here? What caused Gala to shoot up is it got above this long-term downward trend line there. And what I would expect to see, just to bring it all together here, is since we are at a profit-taking point on the bag of money thing there, uh, that I would expect it to see to come back and retest support and then go higher. So the point here is, be ready, and this is not a recommendation for Gala, but it does seem to be getting some strong attention here to pull back and another opportunity to get in. So the next key and bell on that one will be a really interesting time to see. So in the next two days, 
if we see another key and another bell and a pullback, that would, to me would be an opportune time to get into um, Gala Games. But here's the thing also as a side note, anything on KuCoin is going to have these volatile pushes and sell-offs because it's a margin trading platform and it's non-regulated and you know you get the the speculators and gamblers in there so see back here i always advise you know look left when in doubt zoom out so we saw something back in here in january of 22 earlier so that was a year ago kind of thought maybe we're having a bottom it was oversold if i open this up here right we saw similar conditions we had an eri had the TSI coming up over the 20, signal line green, and we had a key and a bell, if you can see this. But the point of all this is this was a good buy, but it hit resistance on that trend line, and that would have been the cap on it. So those are the times to be aware of these uh, fast pumps that usually if they go up really fast, they usually kind of come down and see profit taking, especially on KuCoin. So that's another reason that I would imagine this does pull back in. And then, but we also put in our moving averages though. This is bullish though, I won't lie. This, uh, and these are the kind of patterns you wanna be looking for. So what we have is a big push up, some profit taking likely, and we'll come back down, but we've got that 21 and 50 day moving average sort of turning up here as support. So above this trend line looks good. At this point, I would zoom out to the weekly and see if we can see anything here. So on the weekly basis, also looks very good. Uh, and I, I do see some questions. I'll get to those uh, in a minute, guys. Uh, we have the a huge bullish engulfing candle on the weekly. And that would have been a good sign that this, that was last week. That would have been a good sign this week would see some follow through. And uh, so we have an ERI, okay? So that's our first step. Uh, where did the ERI go on this? It sort of disappeared for some reason. Uh, I need to do that. Uh, I may have deleted it accidentally. Let me put that back on for you guys. So the ERI indicator, okay. So beautiful, nice big ERI arrow on the weekly, big bullish engulfing candle on the weekly. Opening this up, again, double click opens that up. What do we have here? TSI, now this is something I wanna have Joe talk about because we, we kind of discovered this uh, last year and the biggest and longest term moves happen on the weekly TSI breaking higher. So this is significant. And um, also the signal line is green. Let me just pull this open. And this technically, you don't see this very often, but this does look good. We had the key, but the buy signal didn't happen till here, till the bell happened. But I, we do recommend waiting for the green line, the midline to go green as confirming. So finally it went green and sure enough, it shot up. Um, Joe, can you, do you wanna talk about this, the TSI weekly? Cause uh, you explain it uh, the best and why this is important. Well, uh, TSI weekly is, is very important because it's uh, quantifying the overall major uh, trend direction. And uh, you can see in there that we're down at that oversold area and we're just about um, crossing over. And uh, what that would mean is also that the weekly um, calculates a bar each week. So um, it kind of gives you a projection out for the next 60 days, uh, possibly of what we're looking for, of, of how, um, how strong uh, this uh, wave could be, or the time duration mathematically on this wave up uh, could could be. Uh, that's how you would look at this. Yeah, great. Okay, well, um, yeah, and and the what we have seen empirically, we know this is stronger and more money coming in. We saw this first last year with Adam uh, toward the end of the year of 2021, where the markets were pulling back, but Adam. Uh, cosmos was pushing higher and going against the grain and i was like joe how what's going on here how do we catch a hold of this and it was that was then we noticed that on the weekly tsi this is momentum this is instant well we don't know it's institutional money but whales the bigger money is coming in for a sustained move we know that the bigger players accumulate low buy low sell high and so when we see tsi weekly going up 
And uh, that usually sees more follow through. So that's important. Now, here's a question you might be asking, and this is important to think about. If the daily TSI is already maxing out, ideally we want to wait for a pullback for a few days and then get back into it as that weekly also starts to follow through. It's the best signals are when they coincide. So, you know, when this right back in here was great because that weekly was starting to turn higher too. So it is a little tricky when they're not in balance. Uh, I will mention also though that we zoom out here. There are times when the TSI can stay up in this overbought area for a while, like at big market pivots. Uh, I do think we're overbought here. If this turns red, though, it'd be a good time to kind of wait for it to come down, even if it doesn't come all the way down. We would want to wait for this to come down and then turn green again. And that way, we're still in line with the weekly. So we could see another couple weeks of buying pressure on Gala Games, just as an example. Okay, so let me get some questions here. And uh, let's see. Uh, Tori asked, yeah, that's a good question. I didn't cover that in the training. In the bottom left of trading view down here, where you have your different time frames, uh, she had, is there a default to be set for daily, one day, five day, monthly? Actually, accidentally set it for one day. Yeah, so all you have to do is click on all. Here, Tori, let me just open this up here. We're back to a daily here. And uh, if you wanted to switch to a, you also have them up on top here, by the way. And the way you get these is down below. So if you go to all, wait a minute, it's been a while since I've had to get in here, Joe. Where is this thing? Um, there it is. All right, let me clean that back up. I don't know what I hit here. I turned everything on at once, it looks like. Yeah, this is a little confusing. So on a daily chart, that's a one minute, get back to a daily. If you want to set new default time frames, you might not have all these buttons up top here. Default is less. And so what you do is you come up under the drop down and scroll down to the bottom. And uh, the ones that I have favorited, if it's favorited here, it shows up up top. So well, let's see, you accidentally set it for five days and lost the indicators for the trend indicator. Um, well, what you'd want to do is come in here, Tori, and favorite the ones you want. I'm going to turn off three day. I was playing around with three day and it just disappeared up top here. Five day I use for uh, something called a Gaussian channel that that's, I won't, don't show that very often. Might be, might be interesting, interesting to see, look at that actually again. One week, two weeks. I don't need two weeks. I don't need two months. So if you wanted to add one back, come down to the very, very bottom and you can change it from one, change that to one day. And if you hit add, it would add that. Now I already have one day, obviously, but let's say for example purposes, I wanted to make a six day, uh, which is essentially almost a week and to click add, see that it added it here. And then if you wanna add it to your menu bar up top, you would just favorite that. Okay, so that that's how you do that. Hopefully that helps. I'm gonna delete that out. So I don't have that much clutter and, and up in here too. I've got probably way too many of these five minutes. Uh, I'll keep 10 minutes. I don't use 15 minutes. I do 24 minutes. I don't 30 minutes on occasion, 45 minutes. I don't. So um, there you go. Hopefully that helps uh, and explains how you do that. Jim asks us. Uh, so after a key and a bell and a rise, is it best to wait for the new key in the bell before buying? Um, not necessarily. Good question. And so I'm going to give you the answer you don't want to hear. It depends, uh, but it depends on if it's in an, if it's in a nice uptrend here. I mean, Gala really gave us all kinds of signals. We were just not watching it. You know what's funny is this was in our active trader watch list along with Mana and Sand, and I took them out like literally two weeks ago or three weeks ago because I thought these are going to looking terrible. They're going to keep going down, and then sure enough, uh, as soon as I removed them, and they snuck up on us these higher lows right here. Let me just call your attention to that. When you see this kind of pattern, and I'm going to imagine uh, our ERI fired on that. Um, it, uh, it didn't on, it sort of did right in the middle of that vertical green line. Yeah. And those are early indications that selling pressure is done. This big dump right here, pushing higher, pushing higher, and then like that. So to answer your question, 
in terms of the key and bell, this bell, I will sometimes buy, you know, into the one, two, and three range if it hasn't moved yet and the other signals are green. If what I don't like to do is chase a price move up to a resistance area like there. And so that would have coincided with the number three. So, but uh, in terms of that, I would have also then missed this push higher. And this one, um, wow, what's going on with that? The Bollinger Band is going crazy. Uh, this is some kind of a data thing. Well, let me zoom in on it. That's not true. So basically, yeah, on, um, on this one, I would have probably taken profits right at that trend line, but this is also why we always recommend keep a moon bag. And, and I'm gonna, I'm actually glad we're touching on this. There's a time and a place <clears throat> when we see these massive breakouts. And that is at um, in the beginning of bull markets and at uh, key inflection points. And we saw that last year with Solana when we picked, I chose that on August 1st of 2021. And it just shot up and never stopped. And there was a number of these. And we, we had taken profits at these sort of key resistance levels, waiting for pullbacks that never came. And so this is an art and a science. <clears throat> so what, what I'm going to suggest to you is in this market conditions, where we're waiting for a market bottom, there's a tremendous amount of money on the sidelines waiting for these kind of signals that it's safe to go back in the water. You know, the sharks are gone, it's sunny skies, safe to go swimming again. And, uh, you know, the sharks are sneaky, you have to keep an eye out for the fins and they're still there sometimes. But, you know, that's um, the rationale for this and the confidence would have been we were still in our upswing. And this teaches me and reminds me to follow the indicators. Now, the smart way to play this, and normally I would have taken half profits at the resistance area, and that's still a good way to do it. Let me just touch on that because if it had pulled back, if you take 50% profits at resistance areas, two things usually happen. Either it rolls down and you can buy it back for less at lower support. You'll often see that, okay? Or you'll see it pull back. So if we missed it, and in this case, if it pulls back, you're still optimizing that trade potential by only selling half of it because you still have this zone to get back in and that way either way you are still in profits if you'd sold it all here and it didn't come down and pull in you would have missed all this profits okay so that's dollar cost averaging so let's see okay so hopefully that answers your question and um do you use lower time frames on the indicators? Yeah, absolutely, Cornelia. I usually the indicators are uh, fractal. They work on all uh, time frames. Uh, she asks, are you checking the hourly, fifteen minutes, mainly daily, weekly? Good question. Yeah, so um, both. So we we'll use these on the daily and monthly and weekly. Uh, so we did show you that here. Let me move this out. <clears throat> won't spend too much time on this because we already looked at it. So obviously uh, looking at this on the monthly, on the uh, weekly as well. Uh, so you asked me to connect that every time. So this here on the uh, weekly. So we see this TSI on Bitcoin turning up, trying to turn up on the weekly. So absolutely using it on the weekly and the daily. Of course, we showed you that. Uh, I've got a uh, time frame here on the daily. That's ADA. We'll come back. But here's my short-term time frame. And uh, this is the one minute on the left, three minute here. Uh, I do touch on this in the uh, new training, by the way. So again, I encourage you guys to go in the members area and check that out. And then this is a 15 minute. As I click on these charts, you can see the time frames up here changing. So this is 15 and this is a four hour. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of an idea, uh, let me open up the one minute. And when we had, so somebody had asked about shorting. I think it was Evan um, about teaching shorting. We, we, I'm not doing that. It's too dangerous. Uh, I had started a sniper trader group last year and it was beta uh, and it had to be an active trader to get in. And in the end, we killed it because it was just too volatile. But, uh, and part of that is, you know, these things can move quickly. And the other part is, there's a lot of market manipulation and price manipulation. However, if you have the time and you're 
a hard, battle hardened day trader. Uh, these opportunities are there. You need to have nerves of steel and you need to be able to take your take losses because these are the times they reverse against you. But here's the one minute. TSI top, TSI bottom. If you're just using TSI on these swings, you can do fairly well. But if you're shorting, it can be a little bit dangerous. Um, but here, you know, it's always easy in hindsight. This would have been a great short but here and here. Come down, cover the short when this went green. Come back above 20, go long up here. Goes red here, just cover the, you know, get out. Uh, maybe go short again. I mean, th this actually is fairly well behaved. But uh, we were seeing some really funny stuff on the, uh, earlier this year on the shorts, and uh, I got I got liquidated on a fairly decent sized position, uh, and uh, it was not fun. So, and it was because the these signals were right, but they were just moving price all over. And Joe and I have had these conversations. There's an A book, there's a B book. If they want to, market makers can move price to where they want to go, and they are constantly hunting for liquidity, which means to uh, take money from you guys. That being said, this is a three minute with the average true range on. You can see some interesting patterns there. If we look at the ATR and the trend, uh, sorry, the uh, TSI there, let me turn this one off. Um, you can see some nice overlaps. Nice short here on the three minute exit uh, signal on the average true range. But while it looks easy in here, I'm going to tell you that is, uh, it, it's easy to get whipsawed in and out of these things. Uh, so, nice more people in there are joining late. Uh, in terms of that, let me just do this on the ERI. The ERI is, is too, on the shorter the time frame, you'll have too many ERIs. The ERI works best on the longer time frames. Okay. So, uh, but this is a three minute Heiken Ashi uh, chart. I sometimes use this for, you know, getting uh, to what I do use this for still are timing entries on longer time frames. So, let's do this. Uh, we're done with Gala for now. If we go over to Bitcoin and say, all right, look at this. Bitcoin looks pretty good. It's in a nice uptrend. Uh, our TSI is overbought. We're coming up on a take profit candle tomorrow on the trend indicator. But if we wanted to go long, let's say we were looking to get long on this and you really wanted to time your entry better, you could come over here and say, well, let me see you know, what it's doing on the four hour. I've been sharing this four hour with you guys. And here are the TSI. This is an example though, when the TSI can just stay overbought, overbought, overbought. And, um, but so again, the four hour does look a bit overbought here. I would probably wait for the next pullback, at least to a trend line on the four hour, even if I want to be long, you know, we are overbought here. And then that's when I would throw on a Bollinger band that because uh, when it hits those extremes, you know, this could certainly keep pushing higher. And uh, let's see, uh, Myrene, I'm, I'm not recognizing all of these names. So maybe you could sort of cross reference uh, some of the people that I'm letting in here uh, because. Um, uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, people are coming late. All right, everybody. Well, uh, fortunately, this is recorded. So if you're just joining, uh, we're covering some multiple time frames on the various indicators that we have, the crypto mastery indicators that you guys have access to. So that that shows you the uh, four hour. From there, though, let's just let's do this. Let's say that this is what I was looking at. Wait, what did I do there? I'm sorry. I want to open up the four hour. And before we had that pump here, let's just say that we were right in this range and didn't really know what was going to happen and wanted to go long. Nice bullish engulfing candle there. And uh, let's see, somewhere in here, there's a thing to kind of play out uh, the uh, what happened. And for some reason, I can never find it. The um, I'll, I'll dig around for that. That's kind of cool. You can um, do... Uh, simulated trading by going back a bit and then hitting the play button. But anyway, so here's that bullish engulfing candle. This was back on Sunday, January 8th. And let's say you wanted to time this and get into this, uh, but wanted to really get narrow on the price. So that's when I would say, all right, let me look at a 15 minute. Uh, and now this thing here is not one of ours. This is a VWAP with two standard deviations. Um, th this is a little more advanced, but a simpler way to do it is 
this SMMA indicator, okay, and I have it set to a 200 period. This is something I just discovered accidentally. Okay, it's a 200 period moving average, simple moving average on a 15 minute chart. And that thing acts like a magnet, I tell you. Uh, when it's uh, above, it's in a bullish state of being. Uh, when it's below, it's it's going lower. So you see, but it this is zoomed out. It'll get far away from it. It'll pull right back to it. It'll get down below it. It'll pull right up to it. See this time here where it just hugged that 200 period all the way through December, like the last whole week of December almost. And so I use that as kind of a barometer. So if I wanted to go long on the four hour, I would want to see ideally, you know, it's coming and bouncing off the 15, uh, the 200 period simple moving average on a 15 minute. Now, a simpler way to do that is just draw a trend line here. This is a bit extended away from this trend line. So I would be saying, but again, I feel like I might be confusing you guys. I wanna be looking at the same date. So January 8th here would be, or is that thing, January 8th? Just watching the dates down below. Yeah, perfect. So that would have shown right in this range, January 7th. So I'd be like, well, I kind of want to go long. I see a bullish engulfing candle. And, you know, we've got this rising, my rising 200 period on the 15. I'd say, all right, I'm good to go. This is where I want to get in this thing. Just to time the longer term trades. And sure enough, that would have been useful because it's continued to go higher. Now, at this point, I think it's a bit extended. Certainly could come up here, 17.5. But I think it'll have resistance at 17.5. So does that answer your question? You certainly can use shorter time frames to better time your trades on the longer time frames. And those are going to be your safer ones. Uh, daily, weekly, and monthly. So just to touch on that on the weekly, uh, these scenarios here, let me just hide these for you guys and I'll put that in a new object tree. This is the object tree, by the way. I did cover that in the uh, training last night. That's in the members area. So I'll just say bullish scenarios. What it allows you to do is hide these things. So you drag them up into this folder, right? And then what you want, all you have to do is click the eyeball and it'll make them go away, but not delete them. So the problem is I've got a couple more in here. Where are these things hiding? Yeah. so. And I can drag those up and drag them up. And now, there. So uh, those are the scenarios I can show you again. Not much really showing on the weekly. Volatility is very low. I posted in the, um, the signal chat today, by the way, that um, these low volatility periods usually mark just prior to a big move. And I think, uh, you know, we, we'll probably see something this week you guys, we've got Powell speaking tomorrow. We've got the CPI data Thursday. And I think there's probably a lot of fingers on the mouse button to buy or sell. And if we get indications that they're going to ease, you know, Joe, we might just see this thing rocket higher. And if we, the, the line in the sand I'm watching on the weekly is if we get back above this 300 day uh, weekly moving average, 300 week moving average, sorry. Uh, that's important. If we get back up above 19,000, I'll say I'm going to be saying, I think the, bo the bottom is in because the 200, that's the 200 week moving average. I'm sorry, I, I got that wrong. Yeah, the 200 week was old support. And uh, the purple one is the 400 week. You guys have heard me saying, I think we're going to 14,000. Well, here's the thing here are the scenarios. Either we push up here and reject at this uh, to 300 week moving average. And if we reject there, then likely we are coming back down to the 400 week at 14,000. Uh, and so certainly though, this is oversold. So we're gonna see some kind of a relief in here. What we wanna be watching for is when the TSI comes up, you know, uh, does it sort of lose steam and start to turn over or do we get this kind of thing and we break above there because this is what we want to see. You know, the TSI is really the kind of the backbone of everything and all the indicators, I think. 
I don't know, Joe, what do you think? I mean, they, they all have different purposes. That's why they're amazing when they work together. But Yeah. Look, I, I agree with what you're, uh, the direction that you're looking. Uh, each one of them has their own uh, specific uh, characteristic of, uh, you know, of the value that they present. I, I myself really like using the uh, TSI because of the simplicity of it. Yeah. And there's, uh, what did Einstein say? There's genius and simplicity. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a great indicator, Joe. Well, the reason I got thrown off there is I had my 200 week turned off, you guys. The 200 week was the line in the sand. If we zoom out, this is the brave new coin index it kind of goes back the farthest. So let's you zoom out. I mean, if we look how far out our back have gone on Bitcoin and the purple line is that 200 week moving average. So all the way back in the 2015 bear market, it that's what held it 200 week support, 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 rallied off of it. Okay, came back down in 2019 to that 200 week support, bounced up support, okay, pushed back higher than again, the COVID crash, uh, you know, it held his support, it did break, but that was a black swan event that came, that came right down to the 300 week, which held. So what's significant about where we are is, we broke, we've broken for the first time that 300 week moving average. So that is an important line in the sand. And if we push up and get rejected at 18.5, right in this region, 19,000, then I think we do see another leg down and it'll be news driven air quotes, um, you know, but it's amazing how these are, are so well timed with what the charts tell us. So we are in a waiting game, but our uh, our secret weapon is the TSI and the ERI is going to tell us one reason. I'm just not convinced that we are, we've seen the bottom. I'm not as convinced as I'd like to be. What I want to see is this. I mean, Joe, you know, I wish we'd had these back in March, 2020, because big old ERI bearish TSI goes red perfect short signals. I mean, sure enough, market dumped um, in a big way, you know, 50%. Then we had the big bullish ERI here, TSI goes green, and then we just massive rally. That was the bottom. Capitulations are great for catching bottoms. And we, you know, we just haven't seen that. We kind of saw one here. Uh, we've seen, a, but the thing is, we've seen a slow bleed out. This was a capitulation. This was, this was, in aggregate, I guess we have, but I'd love to, I mean, not for anyone to lose money, but for a buying opportunity, if nothing else, I'd love to see this again. And so let's just take a look uh, with that, assuming we're all out of it. So we're kind of seeing this pattern here. So what if we overlay that, you know, and we see this kind of a thing happen? I mean, it's almost perfect. These things do tend to happen when so please, please be sure you have stop losses in place uh, below recent uh, bottoms of the daily or weekly closes, because this would put us right down, you know, let's say we push up here over the next few weeks, I would not I would, I would think this is still a fairly high likelihood I think we do have a bull rally over the next few weeks and then we reject here at the 18.5. And then boom, some other news comes out, market stump, capitulation, go down to 14K, and that's the bottom. 12.5 is still on the table, but at any rate, it would if it does do this, then we'd see a bounce and possibly lower. But, but this still is an opportunity for us. And we can play it well with these indicators. Okay, so I'm um, not trying to sell you on them, I, but I want you to understand um, the power of what you have in your hands and to use them. Uh, you know, it, it, kind of what I'm hinting at is it's great to take your time and get comfortable, but don't don't take too long because complacency is dangerous. And what you don't want to be waiting too long for these opportunities. Can we can we get up in this range? It's also a danger zone because these bear market rallies are notorious for dumping again. So we want to catch these ideal bottoming uh, patterns here. So hopefully that's helpful. 
let's see uh kaya says where can i find the new training um it's in the uh sorry it's in the uh, active trader group uh the advanced trader group and so if you are uh, in m3 active trader uh, that's in there and uh that's for the m3 program and it's not part of crypto mastery because it kind of includes some other things but um uh, if you'd like more information, I think you're in Active Trader, as I recall. So, if you uh, uh, are not, reach out to Myrene. We uh, we can talk to you about how to. Okay, yeah, if, Kai, if you reach out to um, Myrene or or one of us, uh, we can uh, help you out with that. It's uh, some way to uh, to do that and some kind of an upgrade. But uh, I did an hour and a half training on that, and uh, that is over here in the. Uh, the training now in the crypto mastery members there is the similar training in the ta so you should have that and because we did uh it's a little bit older but it's in there and uh but this is the training here that um uh i was referring to okay all right um great and let's see all right no more questions let's see how we doing on time we're already at 110 i guess we've already gone over an hour joe my time flies well Okay. Well, anything you want to chime in on um, that I missed or drop some wisdom? Joe always has the nuances that uh, I always uh, I'll continue to learn from him. Uh, look, um, you know, let's uh, uh, let the cake bake and let the yeah. market come to us. Everything's going in our favor right now. Just uh, set the alerts so that you're uh, ready to take profits or downside positioning. Yeah, and um, I'm just taking a quick scan at the uh, crypto uh, scanner here. And honestly, I don't use this that much, but um, it's a good way to find out. It's a good time to start using it again because of the, uh, the timing of the markets here. So what I'm going to do here, and um, this looks a little different to me, Joe, but I want to to set this on the various exchanges and the filters and the settings. Where do you do that again, where we can turn off a lot of the noise here? I don't want to look at these WETH W wrapped ETH on solid. I want to keep it uh, top gainers is what I want. Uh, no. And then certain exchanges. I thought you did that under filters, but they changed the, uh, the interface. Okay, well, we'll look at that next week, you guys. We're over an hour. This class is really designed to be an hour. An hour. And I was just skimming through this to see if there's any uh, that we want to be keeping an eye on. Looks like uh, Litecoin is doing a lot. This, these are indexes, however. So I've somehow gotten on the wrong area. Let's see, high, low, I don't need. Uh, the exchange, the price, the change there. Just don't want to do a cursory uh, look at these. Uh, so Litecoin index. We'll look at this next week, guys. I think we what this week I wanted to focus on was a deep dive into the indicators, see if you guys had any questions. And so uh, if you're in a trade, uh, as Joe said, let the cake bake. Uh, certainly if you're in this kind of a sequence, if you're in Bitcoin right now, letting the cake bake means just letting these the indicators play out. So I would expect one more day of upside on Bitcoin to complete the uh, pattern, the seven series number sequence. And if you see it pushing up into likely resistance, that would be a good profit taking zone. So if we see a big push higher in Bitcoin here in the next day or two, uh, in obvious resistance right up here around 18,000, if we see a big pump, take profits. Because that's uh, this is one of the few indicators that gives you take profit signals. It's when you see this money bag here, that's time to refresh, wait for a pullback, wait for a new bell. Okay, everyone, thanks. Uh, thank you, Tori. And um, for those of you that uh, joined late, this is being recorded. And um, that'll be uh, uploaded uh, later. And um, you guys will have access to that. So anyway, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Joe. I'll let everybody get back to their day, and we'll talk to you next week.